How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Patriot DIY channel. In this video, we're gonna be building these two drawer nightstands complete with built-in power outlets and hidden wireless charging. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So my family and I have been living in our new house for about three years now. And that entire time, my wife and I have had no nightstands in our bedroom. And as you can imagine, that's pretty inconvenient. You don't have anywhere to put your stuff. You can't put a lamp beside the bed, any of that stuff. So this year for my wife's birthday, I decided to build us some nightstands. So this is the design that she liked. These are extra wide, they're 30 inches wide. 30 inches tall, and they have two deep wide drawers. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you step-by-step step how to build these, and we're gonna be throwing in some extra cool features that you don't see in your average nightstand. I'm also gonna be providing full digital plans on how to build these, and I'll have a link to those plans linked in the description below. But before we get into this, guys, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell, and give us a thumbs up. Now I chose to build mine using rough cut hardwoods. The frame is poplar, the top is ash, and for the plywood panels we're using Baltic birch. But that's not necessary. You can certainly build nightstands very similar to this using construction lumber that you can find at your local Lowe's or Home Depot. Now for our home, we decided to go with this two-tone pattern. We have a stained top and a distressed antique white bottom with two knobs on each drawer. Now this is obviously customizable to whatever you like, but we're also adding in some extra features like a built-in power outlet on the back so you can plug in phone chargers and lamps. And I've also integrated some hidden wireless charging. So you just set your phone in the right spot on the top no wires, no charging pads sitting on top. It's all built into the nightstand, so you don't have to see any of that. Now with all that said, let's get to work. First thing we're gonna do is cut down the components for our frame starting with our one by twos and then cutting down our two by twos for the legs of each nightstand. We're gonna need five 24 inch pieces and four 13 inch pieces. And then we'll also be cutting down our two by twos for our legs. Each of those will be 28 inches. We'll take those one by twos over to our Craig 720 Pro jig and put pocket holes in each end. And switching back over to our legs. This is definitely an optional step, but just for a little added detail, we're gonna put these legs into our tapering jig on the table saw, and we're gonna add just a little taper to the bottom of each leg. I have done a full video on how to build this tapering jig, and I'll put a link to that right here at the top of the screen. With all of our frame components complete, we're gonna go back over to the bench top and we're gonna start assembling these. I'm gonna clamp down a square to the bench top to make sure we get everything nice and square. And then we'll fit our 13 inch stretchers in between our legs and fasten those in place with pocket hole screws. This is gonna be the assembly for the side of our nightstand and we'll repeat these steps for all four. Once that's done, we can cut down our three quarter inch plywood sides. And I'm gonna start by cutting down the rough dimensions with my track saw. And then we'll take this over to the table saw and rip it down to its final dimensions. And before we fasten those in place, we'll give each one a good sanding. Thank you. 
These panels are gonna be fastened in between the legs using pocket hole screws. So we'll take this back over to our pocket hole jig and drill several pocket holes in each side. With that complete, we can fit these into place and fasten them down using wood glue. And then we're gonna tack it in place with our brad nailer before going back and securing it with pocket hole screws. And then we'll just complete those steps for each side of our nightstand. With the two side assemblies complete, we can put in our front and back stretchers. And we're gonna do this the same way we did before, by measuring and marking the location, then fitting them into place and securing them with pocket hole screws. We'll have three in the front of our nightstand to separate our two drawers. In the back, we'll have two, one at the top and one at the bottom. And once that's done, we can fit in the back panel of our nightstand and we're gonna secure that the same way we did on the sides. and the main body of our nightstand is complete. So we're gonna turn our attention to the top. Our tops are gonna to be 18 inches by 30 inches. So we're gonna need three six inch sections for the top and we'll rip those down on the table saw. I'm using one inch thick ash for this, but you could definitely use any one by or two by material you want. To assemble our top, we're gonna to be gluing each of these pieces together. And to get that alignment just right, I'm gonna be using my Win Biscuit Joiner. It's gonna cut these small slits into the edge of our boards, and that's gonna accept our biscuits, which will help us align all of these perfectly. You'll notice we have our biscuits on the inside edge of our outer boards. We'll apply a little wood glue to the edges, insert our biscuits, and then we'll fit all these boards together before finally clamping them together with pipe clamps. While we're waiting for those tops to dry, we're gonna turn our attention to the drawers. So I'm gonna be cutting down the rough size of our drawers with the track saw, and then we'll take it over to the miter saw to cut down the final length, and then the table saw to rip down our final width. The completed size of our drawer boxes is gonna be 23 inches wide by 12 inches deep. We're gonna be assembling these drawer boxes using pocket holes. So we're gonna take the front and back pieces of our drawer over to our pocket hole jig and drill pocket holes in each. We're gonna be using quarter inch plywood for the bottom of our drawer boxes. And so we're gonna take each section of our drawer over to the table saw, and we're gonna cut a quarter inch dado on the inside of each piece. Notice on the front and back of your drawer boxes, the pocket holes are gonna be on the outside. So you're gonna want the dado on the opposite side from your pocket holes. We're just gonna cut this groove a quarter inch deep and a quarter inch from the bottom of the drawer. And we're gonna to have to do this in two passes to cut our quarter inch dado for the bottom of our drawer. Then I'm gonna cut down that quarter inch material on the table saw for the bottom of our drawer boxes. Music 
And now we're ready to assemble our drawers. So I'm gonna apply a little wood glue. I'm gonna align the front with the sides and fasten it with pocket holes. Notice again that the pocket holes are gonna face the outside of the drawer. Before we put on the other side, we're gonna go ahead and slide in that quarter inch bottom. So I'm gonna apply a little wood glue in each of our dados, and then we can slide that quarter inch bottom into place. Once we have that in place, we can put on the other side of our drawer box, and that's gonna capture that bottom and hold it in place. and our drawer box is complete. I think it looks good, and we're gonna go ahead and follow that same procedure for all four drawers. Once the glue on our tops has had time to dry, we're gonna go ahead and cut off those rough edges and cut it down to its final size. And again, we're gonna be doing that with the wind track saw. Now this is another optional step, but I did decide to route the edges of my tops, and I'm gonna be doing that with my DeWalt cordless router. Like I mentioned before, we are gonna be integrating some hidden wireless charging in here, and I will link to the wireless charger that we're using. So with our top flipped upside down, we're just gonna route out a spot for that wireless charger to sit. Our goal here is to get our charger to sit about a half inch from the top surface of our tabletop. And then we're also gonna be using our router to cut a groove straight down the edge for the charger cord. With that complete, we can get ready to stain. And before staining, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some of this Minwax pre-stain just so we get a nice even finish. Once that's had time to dry, you can go ahead and apply your stain. I'm gonna be using a Minwax oil-based stain and I'm just gonna apply that using a rag. You can see we're getting a nice even color, but it's not quite dark enough for what I want. So I'm gonna let that dry and then go back and add a couple more coats until I get it as dark as I want it. We're also gonna be staining the bottom of our nightstands. Now, I know we are ultimately gonna be painting these, but we're going for a distressed look. And the reason for staining it first is so that when we go back to scuff up that paint, we'll see that nice dark wood grain underneath the paint rather than the lighter unstained wood. Once that's had time to dry, we're ready for paint. I'm gonna be using the Valspar cabinet and furniture paint. And we're gonna be spraying these with our Graco airless paint sprayer. This is a great sprayer for DIY projects and I will have a link to that in the description below. While we're waiting for that paint to dry, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the drawer faces. For that, I'm gonna be using three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, and we're gonna size these so we have just under an eighth inch gap all the way around. Once we have those cut to size and sanded, 
I want the edges of these to have a nice finished look. So I'm gonna be applying some birch edge banding to this. This is a really easy process. The edge banding has glue on the back side and you can just apply it using a regular iron. You're just gonna hold it in place and then heat it up. And once that's in place, you can just use a scrap piece of wood or a roller to make sure it gets nice contact all the way down. The purpose of this is to hide the end grain of the plywood and give it a nice finished look. Once the adhesive is dried, you can cut off the excess. And the best way to shave that off is with one of these edge banding tools. Then you just give the edges a good sanding and you'll get a nice complete edge with the look of a solid piece of wood. Now we can drill the holes for the hardware on our drawers. I'm gonna be using two drawer pulls on each drawer and I'm gonna be using the Craig drawer pull jig for making sure I get these perfectly aligned. None of the paint is dry on the bottoms of our nightstands. We can go back and start roughing up the edges. Now I'm not going for a super distressed look. I'm just going and kind of randomly taking off a little bit of paint to expose that dark stain underneath. I'm just gonna be hitting this in random spots, especially on the edges. And that's just gonna give it a nice lightly distressed look. Of course, this is optional. We just really like that distressed farmhouse look. To attach the tops of our nightstands, we're gonna be using these Z clips. That's gonna allow the wood on the tops to expand and contract over time. And the best way that I've found to cut slots for those Z clips is just to use a biscuit joiner. But before we attach our top, we're gonna to go ahead and get our drawers installed. And a really handy jig for getting this drawer hardware perfect is this Craig drawer slide jig to help keep everything aligned. Now I promise guys, I'm not sponsored by Craig, but they just have a lot of handy tools that work great for these types of projects. And I will have links to all of those in the description below. Once our drawer slides are installed in the cabinet, we can go ahead and drop in our drawer box and get those attached. Once those drawer boxes are installed and we've tested to make sure they move freely, we're ready to put on the drawer fronts. Now a great way to get the spacing for these just right is to use playing cards and that'll help you get the spacing just right all the way around. Once you've got your spacing right, you can temporarily attach your drawer fronts to the drawer boxes using regular wood screws. Then I'm gonna open it up and fasten those together from the inside using one inch pan head screws. Then we can remove our temporary hardware and go ahead and drill holes for our drawer pulls and get those installed. Next thing we're gonna do is install our power outlet on the back. And before I do any cutting, I'm gonna put some painter's tape on here to make sure I don't scuff up these freshly painted nightstands. Then we'll take some measurements of our power strip and transfer those over to the nightstand. Then we'll drill holes and cut out that shape using our jigsaw. And once we test fit it, we can go ahead and remove that tape and fasten that into place. And now we're ready to install the wireless charger into our top. And to fasten this into place, I'm just gonna be using some double-sided tape. We'll apply that and then fit it into place 
and then we're ready to fasten the top to the bottom. We're just gonna be doing this upside down on the workbench, measure to make sure it's perfectly centered, and then we can install those Z clips. I really like the Z clips because they're gonna fasten it into place securely, but still allow some movement of the wood with humidity over time. With all that complete, we can go ahead and put our drawers back in and our nightstand assembly is complete. I think everything here turned out great, guys. Our drawers function flawlessly. I think that distressed look of the bottom looks great. I really like the edge that we put on the top of the nightstand and the added features of the power outlet and the wireless charging are really cool. All right, let's test this bad boy out. Oh yeah. And with the nightstands finished, we can finally get them into place in our bedroom. Now I will admit there was a lot more that went into this than I thought there was gonna be, especially starting from rough sawn lumber. And of course there were mistakes made along the way, but the end result is something that I'm really proud of. I spent a whole lot of time making sure that every little detail was perfect. And like I said before, I'm not a master woodworker. As far as build quality, this is probably the nicest piece of furniture that I've ever made. I will say probably the thing that I struggled with the most was making sure that these drawers were absolutely perfect. I wanted them to sl slide nice and smooth and I wanted the gaps around them to be perfect all the way around. So I hope this video helped you out, guys. If you're looking to build some nightstands like this, here in the next week or so, I will have plans for these nightstands linked in the description below if you wanna get one for yourself. And as always, I will have links to all the tools we used as well as the wireless charger and any other products that we used linked in the description below so you can pick all those up for yourself. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe and we'll see you next time.